Right then, folks, here I am. At the stile where I last said goodbye to the big herd. Can't see them anywhere. Man just gone through anyway. If they'd been here, I would have said, can I walk across the field with you? But I can't see any. Not really. Right, no sign, no cow pack. Not for long though, folks, is it? It won't be for long. They'll be out soon. They could even be out, they could be right over the other side. So, no running to get to the, well, I didn't run. But I had to walk past all the cows here to get to that stile. And they were all along here as well. Most of them were scattered around the field and some were up in the trees there. But I still had a gauntlet to run. And that's within the year. Within the last six months, I suppose. It was in the autumn. I've got the exact date somewhere. I'll be going through those houses over there where there's another field. <sighs> another field I've got to risk. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll worry about that when we get there. But like I'm saying, this is the very last week, really, I would say, before they're out. Um... They will be out soon. Yeah, I just met a bloke that looked like a farmer. Walking over here. But all this pittedness is all cow. No cow pack though. So they haven't been out for a while. That black herd eating the turnips could be them. The farmers do rotate cows. There'll be people who look after cows who'll be interested in seeing how the public feel. Let's just go up a bit so we can see the views. Look. look at that. I'm well here for it there, look. Right over now, I'm going to turn off, take a picture. Turn off now. Right then, so I've come up. I came down one side and the Mendip Ramblers have done a lot of repairs to the steps going up. They've put new supports in. I've come across a little brook. Just climbed up here. Just nice and steady, and then you don't get breathless. Something you've got to consider if you suffer with asthma or any other breathing problems. You don't, this doesn't have to confine you. What's been going wrong with people with breathing difficulties, exactly, is they, they don't exercise at all. It makes it worse. Stagnant air in the lungs creates an environment for, for toxic muck to form. 
So no matter how small you, you, you must move. It's very difficult. What about people who are disabled? I mean, they still manage to get a, around. They have to have physio, those that are, are paralysed, to move that rib. Yeah. They should get physio. Who knows if they do? There's such a shortage of carers. They're now allowing carers with COVID to work in care homes. No. All the restrictions have been lifted. You have to still advise to wear a mask on public places like on buses. Someone's just got the worst record at the moment and cases in the whole country. But in Somerset, they're allowing carers with COVID to work. So, it's either the older people who need caring, they've got some resilience, they've had their jabs, to protect them. So, hopefully that's uh, the case. Yeah, it's very slippery here, look at this bank. Looks to me like people have been going over here for a bit more stability. Because all I need now is to bang my dodgy knee and I'm be in trouble. If you go back 10 years when I first done this, you'd, you'd probably see quite a difference. Although, I must admit, though I've got wheezing and a bit of asthma, it's not my lungs that are slowing me up. So it's age a bit more now. Back then I was very wheezy. I was still recovering from years of smoking. I didn't really smoke much as a young person though. I started smoking when I started a new career after teaching. I went into nursing. All the doctors and nurses smoked. So from the age of about 42, 43, I took up smoking. There was a lot of stress going on in my life at the time. The work was stressful. And we were allowed to smoke. So I started smoking. It was awful, really. After a 16-year gap of never having a fag, I started to smoke again. And I smoked for another 16 years. And I gave it up. And I've given it up forever. So there will be some damage from periods of my life from that. Plus I was brought up in a home of smokers. The whole of society smoked when I was growing up. If you went to the cinema, smoking was allowed. Went on a bus, smoking was allowed. Hello little beetle. Are you on the journey? Are you? So in one way or another, I'd had dam damage done anyway. So I'm not surprised that uh, there being some side effects as I'm older, really. <sighs> but they do heal as well. I think they have healed, but I think it's like I said to my granddaughter once when she was anti-smoking but now smokes. Your lungs are like bubble wrap. The alveoli, once they've been damaged, like bubble wrap and popped. That's it. Permanent damage. So, now yeah, they all smoke. All my children smoke. All of them. And yet, when they were growing up, me and their dad never smoked at all. When they're young children. <sighs> no. We never smoked. They never seen us smoking. In fact, when they saw me with a fag the first time. I think Joni was about 15. She's 43 now. When they first saw me with a fag, they were horrified. <laughs> they were there because they were sneaking around trying to smoke behind me back. But I could always tell. As soon as I opened that front door, I could smell it. So I never ever encouraged them. 
I used to go around picking up their dog ends and putting them in a jar of water which turned black and yellow and I left it on the side I said that's what your lungs will look like no so nothing I did stopped them unfortunately they told me later they used to spend their dinner money I used to give them lunch money they spent it on fags Right, over and out. Over and out. <laughs>